Industries Incorporated introduces the ultimate storm shelter installation video. We at AK Industries have always believed in customer service after the sale. This installation video should be a valuable guide for the proper installation of your ultimate storm shelter. If at any time you feel that you need assistance from the factory concerning your installation, AK will gladly provide it. Remember, it is very important that you watch this video fully and read the installation instruction booklet provided before you begin the installation. Step 1. Inspection of Excavation Site Before initial excavation, always investigate the location of utilities and always contact your local representative so that they may mark the areas before you dig. Step 2. Locating an area to bury the storm shelter the installation area should be close to your home, business, or familiar location. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, the current average lead time for tornado warnings is 13 minutes. But remember, you may only have a fraction of that time once you hear a warning in your area. A warning can be described as that which can be sent by a siren, radio, TV, or other device. Therefore, it is very important to choose a location for the storm shelter wisely. Step 3. Marking out the area for excavation. Using a tape measure, confirm the measurements of the storm shelter itself, length, width, and height. The instruction booklet also has this information available. In the area to be excavated for installation, mark out an area using the length and width measurements you have confirmed. You can use either a tool to scratch out marks for excavation, a string, or marking paint to designate the area. Step 4. Excavation and Confirming Grade once the hole is dug for the installation, it will be necessary to confirm proper grade for the unit using the height measurement. You can bury the storm shelter up to a maximum of 8 inches out of the ground and a minimum of 2 inches out of the ground at the top edge of the exterior wall. Confirming grade can be obtained by using one of the following two methods. Method 1 is to use a 2x4 or other straight edge. Place the straight edge across the full length of the excavated hole with a level resting on it. Then use a tape measure to check the consistency of depth of the excavated hole across the span to the bottom of the straight edge. Method 2 is the use of a laser level or contractor's level. Please refer to the directions of use with the equipment you purchase or rent for this procedure. Step 5. Leveling the base of the excavation. If the native excavated soil is sandy or loamy, then it would be appropriate to use native soil available for leveling the bottom of the hole. If the native excavated material is clay or hard soil, then you should use a pea gravel aggregate mix or sand for leveling the bottom of the hole. This can be a layer that is approximately one to two inches, or at least covering the unevenness of the bottom of the excavated hole. Use a pounder or tampering tool to get the bottom of the hole settled completely flat. Check the level again just prior to installation of the storm shelter. Step six, installation. Hook the storm shelter to the backhoe using a lifting apparatus, not included, to the eyelets provided on the storm shelter. The storm shelter is raised and then lowered into the hole for final preparation before backfill. Step 7. Eyelet Removal Once the storm shelter is in the ground and level, remove the two eyelets from the top of the storm shelter. Step 8. Backfill Now that the storm shelter is in the excavated hole, level, and eyelets removed, backfill of the native soil can begin. Note. If the native soil is sandy or loamy and free-flowing, then continue with that soil. If the native excavated material is clay or hard soil, then consider using pea gravel for the first half of the backfill process, then finish with existing soil to grade. Step 9. Concrete When selecting your concrete, Make sure that you order a pea gravel mixture, if available, with a rating of 4,000 PSI, 8 to 10 slump value. If pea gravel mixture is not available, then order a light aggregate mixture with the same rating values. Once the aggregate mixture initially begins to pour, 
it is necessary to take a long piece of rebar or other long rod and work at the concrete slightly within the open slats in the top of the storm shelter. This will help promote the flow of the aggregate mixture through the bottom of the unit and up through the sides of the unit. Note, if the installer has access to a vibrating tool, that can be used in the slats. This will also help promote the flow of the concrete aggregate mixture. About one quarter of the way through the concrete pour, approximately two feet up the sidewalls, it will be necessary to observe the concrete and decide whether or not it has enough flowability. If it appears that the flowability is not to the specifications, in other words, too dry, the pour must be stopped and the correct specifications achieved. The concrete truck can add water to the mix and bring it up to specifications. Make sure that there is not too much water added though, as it cannot be taken away. The operator of the concrete truck will have to be consulted and communicated with during this phase. Once the pour has reached the top slats or inlets, stop pouring the concrete. At this point, it will be necessary to add the rebar locking tabs to the slats in the top of the storm shelter. Once the rebar locking tabs have been placed, the finishing pour can continue. Step 10. Removing the top supports and final phase of concrete pour. Once the pour is to take place, the top supports are to be removed in order for the final pour and final finishing of the concrete. It will be necessary to leave the support board between the two vents to ensure that they stay vertically plumb during the setup phase of the concrete. Make sure that the concrete is forced under the lip of the top of the storm shelter door and outside top edge of the wall. Stop the pour when the concrete is level with the bottom edge of the door flange. Step 11. Final finish of concrete. During the final finishing phase of the concrete, a great deal of babysitting needs to take place with the concrete. Keep smoothing and working the water to the top of it. Using an edge tool for concrete is the best approach for the seam between the concrete and the plastic portion of the storm shelter. Once the concrete has finished, a bead of silicone should be applied in the radius between the finished edge of the plastic and the concrete. A brush broom can be used at the very end of the setup phase of the concrete. This will give it a brushed finish and be more resistant to foot slippage around the unit when wet. It will be necessary to wipe down the concrete film or residue from the unit. This should come off rather easily using a wet rag and rinsing the rag often in between wipes. Step 12. Vents. Build and secure the vent sections together using the screws provided with the unit. If sections become damaged or need replacing in the future, it is easy to take apart with the stainless steel screws provided. Step 13. Removal of interior supports. Allow the storm shelter to sit undisturbed for approximately 48 hours or until the concrete has fully cured. Then you can enter the storm shelter to remove the interior wooden supports. You will need a T30 bit or screwdriver to remove the two fasteners on the interior supports located at the steel door framing. You will also need a Phillips bit or a Phillips screwdriver to remove the rest of the support framing from the exterior of the storm shelter. Tool list. Tape measure marking paint or string, shovel, Phillips screwdriver or rechargeable drill with Phillips bit, a straight edge or contractor's level, concrete finishing tools, lifting apparatus, included, vent sections, stainless steel screws for the vents, T30 torque bit for a drill, tube of silicone sealant. For more information on the storm shelter, contact AK Industries at 1-800-370-3749 or at akindustries.com.